Welcome to Books on Air, the podcast that you really don't want to miss. I'm Suzanne Harris, and today you're going to get a sneak peek behind the scenes at what it's like to be an author. You're going to hear the backstory behind the book. You'll find out who or what inspires the person. They'll tell you where their ideas come from. And who knows, you might even get an inside scoop on a new project. If you want to know more about them and their work, we will certainly tell you where you can find them on social media. Joining me today is a very impressive woman, Nevsha Vadan Karamemet. She's here to talk about her book, Awakening. Awakening is not what you think. Nevsha is a teacher, an author, and an entrepreneur. She founded the Nevsha Institute and Breath Hub, where they provide self-mastery courses for people who want to grow and expand in all areas of their life. She's written 11 best-selling books, and she recently launched her app, Breath Hub. She's considered an authority in the breathing sciences and is a faculty member at Breathing Sciences Faculty vice president at the Graduate School of Behavioral Health Sciences and founding president of the Breath Coaching Federation. Nevsha, it is such a pleasure to welcome you to Books on Air. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. It's my pleasure. You know, I think one of the first things that we should talk about for our listeners is the breathing sciences. Some of our listeners won't know what that means. Could you explain that to them? Yeah, sure. Uh, many people nowadays are breathing dysfunctional without even knowing about it. And there are more than 200 symptoms just because of dysfunctional breathing habits like anxiety, panic attacks, fear, migraine, headaches, attention deficit problems. And what we're uh, focusing on Breathing Sciences School is analyzing people's dysfunctional breathing habits with different scientific methods like capnographs and uh, oximeters. And we have different analysis systems, very detailed, and telling people if they have dysfunctional breathing habits or not. And especially like performance players, athletes, and professional businesswomen, speakers, you know, singers, uh, they do have some dysfunctional breathing habits due to using too much breathing techniques or due to not understanding the uh, difference and the uh, uh, in relationship between the respiration and breathing, because respiration and breathing are very much different and they do affect each other, we have to watch our respiratory chemistry when uh, using breathing techniques as well. So the Breathing Sciences School, we are focusing on that. When did you first become interested in breathing sciences? It's been almost over two decades in my 20s, so it's been a long, long time uh, because I did have a breathing problem myself. I was a shallow breather and I was a professional sports uh, player. I was a volleyball player for many years and I was having some breathing issues. I was having some panic attack, anxiety issues and and I had to watch my breathing and keep on working on my breathing. And that's when I literally realized from my own experience how important breathing is for performance, sports, overall health, especially psychology. I think we're underestimating the power of our breathing. Like there are a lot of people who see psychologists and use prescriptive medicine if they have psychological problems, but behind most psychological problems, there are dysfunctional breathing habits. So you could just use some breathing techniques and some breath work and heal most of your psychological problems, whereas many people are using prescriptive medicine. So when I realized that, I wanted to dedicate my life to teaching people this uh, amazing uh, art and also an ancient uh, science. You know, I think the point that you have made about breathing sciences is particularly relevant right now during the COVID crisis that we are all experiencing. Yeah. We know that part of the symptoms or the leftover symptoms from the condition is that it affects breathing to a great degree. Plus, I think the stress 
that people have been under during this almost year and a half that we've all been through this pandemic. I think stress has to be affecting the way people breathe. And I think they're searching for something that will be helpful. Would you agree? Yeah, I definitely agree. And we have also been seeing people getting much uh, getting affected by the virus if they don't have healthy respiratory systems. So people who do have more healthy respiratory systems, who do have more functional breathing habits, like most children, were not affected by the virus as the people who did have respiratory problems. So it's kind of like the world, the environment is also showing us the need to, you know, be very cautious about our breathing and work on our breathing. I couldn't agree with you more. Now let's talk a little bit about the book. Would you give our listeners an overview of Awakening? Sure. Uh, I'm uh, beside uh, all the work I've been doing as a breathing scientist and a behavioral scientist. I'm also a Course of Miracles teacher, and I've been involved with the Course of Miracles for over probably around 17 years. And um, yeah, and with breathing as well, like breathing has a whole scientific part and also a whole spiritual part involved in it. It's the it's an ancient science, and also it's. Uh, I think the deepest spiritual path one can ever experience, if anybody here listening to us ever experienced a breathwork session, they would know what, they, what I'm talking about. So I was involved with breathing for a long time. And with that, I was also involved with, uh, you know, the meaning of life and what life means, because life and breath is the same thing. The deeper you breathe, the deeper you understand life. And without even knowing uh, even though I wanted to stay on the scientific path without even knowing, I was on the spiritual path myself, and I was, um, you know, deepening my knowledge about life and thinking about, you know, having questions about life, trying to understand life and looking at the, you know, meaning of life and what's happening. And then I met Course of Miracles and became a teacher, and have been teaching Course of Miracles for many years now. Uh, the book is about, basically, it's about, it's kind of like my own interpreta- interpretation with uh, the miracle consciousness and the ego consciousness and what's in the book, Course of Miracles, and also my experience with my students, because I have realized over the years that what most people think awakening is, is not awakening. So that's why I called the book the awakening, and then maybe it's not what you think. And it's kind of like the whole book is kind of like an inquiry about the world, about who we are, about what awakening is, and about this, you know, reality we know, or the, the reality as we know, because maybe the reality as we know is not the reality at all. So it's kind of like an inquiry filled with you know, questions, and I'm sure people who are on the spiritual path will be very much interested in the book, and they love the book. I have a lot of students who has been reading the book over and over again, like three times, four times, five times, <laughs> because it's kind of like, like every book, it feels alive, and it's because it's a, the aim of the book was, an, it was the book being an inquiry for people. Uh, that probably keeps the book alive. So it's an alive book. It's kind of like a spiritual coaching book or, you know, inquiry book where you can, you know, uh, have a chance to look at the deeper meaning of life and what the reality means or what your reality means to you or, you know. (laughs) Yes. I mean, I can see that. You would read the book multiple times because you read it the first time and you see certain messages and then you go back and you reread it and you not only see those messages, but you see different messages that you didn't see the first time. There's a, a quote from the author, Ayn Rand, that that's running through my head. Uh, she once said, we don't see the world as it is. We see the world as we are. And I think that's one of the things that you're saying about the book. And I think now is an absolutely perfect time for people to read a book, 
like this, like awakening. Awakening is not what you think because you're right. I think we all think, oh, I know what that is, but we really don't. Yeah. Yeah. And it's, I, I think also one of the, one of the aims of the book was, uh, you know, to help, helping people that, uh, helping people understand that there is one truth beyond all we see. So I agree. The world is not what you, you we see the world as we want to see. And beyond what we want to see, there is still the truth. So reaching to that truth is actually the real meaning of awakening, like seeing beyond our own thoughts and seeing beyond our illusions, gaining the ability to move beyond our thoughts and, you know, be our needs, beyond our needs to see the world the way we want to see it. Because the moment you stop your own, you know, questioning or the thinking system, which I call, I've uh, called the ego consciousness in the book, like in Course of Miracles as well, you can then, once you leave your need to be right, and, you know, uh, once you leave the need uh, that your thoughts are right, and you know it all, and this and that, and then you can go beyond what you know, and realize there's something bigger out there, beyond what you know. So the whole book is, I think, moving beyond the mind and beyond what you know, not in an intellectual way. So it's it's kind of like people are probably questioning <laughs> so with a book, by reading a book, how can I move beyond what I know, you know, and, you know, with a uh, not in an intellectual way. I think it's by inquiry, because that has been my experience with more than I've worked more than 40,000 people joining my courses over the, you know, two decades, more than two decades. And um, what I have found out is we can only tap into a real awakening experience when we are brave enough to uh, leave what we know and have a little bit of an inquiry. So that's why the book is an inquiry. So, why, you know, it's kind of like, let's just read it and see it. You know, let's think about it a little. <laughs> I like that. Yes, I like that. It, And I think right now we really need to start thinking about ourselves and where we are. Now, let's talk about the Nevsa Institute and Breath Hub, the courses that you offer through the Institute. Are they designed or would the the courses that you have available reinforce the ideas that are in the book? Uh, yes and no. The book is kind of like a, a starting point. And with my, uh, with Nesha Institute, in Nesha Institute, we have mainly five principles. And all of the courses in Nesha Institute are developed in a way that uh, People who want to grow and expand in all areas of life, balanced, because I see a lot of people who are able to grow their maybe wealth and lose their health. And there are a lot of people who are very healthy, but then they are not very wealthy. And, you know, like some people focus on wealth, some people health, some people relationships and miss the other side of life. My aim has been supporting people, you know, reach to their highest potential in all areas of life. That's why we formed a whole curriculum with five main principles. And those principles are breath work, mind work, meditation, uh, strategy, like building a strategy and purpose, finding your purpose. Because I think with those five principles, if there's anybody, you know, who wants to go and expand in all areas of life, I think those five principles are very much important. They have been very much important in my life. They work. They have been, you know, I've been testing those five principles in my students' lives and their lives changed. If you keep on working with your breath, which is which is the most spiritual thing we can ever touch or experience, if you can keep on meditating on top of that, and if you keep on connecting within and asking yourself the right questions and understand if you understand your purpose, who you are, your mission, what you want to do and how you want to serve people and you have if you have strategic plans and if you keep on working with your mind, you ultimately have it all figured out. 
You know, it's kind of like if you're doing five of those, you start governing your whole life. It's kind of like this executive mind starts, you know, working.